it's <clears throat> it's really late <clears throat> and um, and I'm not feeling my best so I apologize for my voice and I apologize for the shortness of this video all I want to tell you today is to be kind to one another all I want to tell you today is to be careful that we do not miss the signs when people around us need our help. This has been a very difficult year, you all know that. This has been a dreadful year and it has affected us in ways in which um, we could not have anticipated a few months ago. I'm not talking only about the physical pain, I'm not talking only about losing people whom we love or being ill ourselves, I'm talking about the mental toll that this year has had on, on us and on those close to us. And the problem with the mental suffering of the world is that very often it goes unnoticed. Very often it's associated with um, a sort of a fear and uh, shame and um, that only doubles its trauma. Don't forget that there were people who were in danger even before this virus hit the world. And then these people... These people are now trapped in their homes, very often, very frequently, with their abusers. Don't forget that there were families who, that were on the brink of being broken, even before this virus hit, and that now these families and their very fragile balances have been stuck together and forced to survive together in very close proximity, very often. Don't forget that there are children who are abused by their parents, who are now stuck in their homes with those parents. And that there are children of all ages that are abused of their parents. I'm not only referring to children who are five or six or teenagers, but children who are now in their 50s and 60s and 70s and who are <clears throat> stuck in their homes with their elderly and unfortunately ill parents, that they can no longer afford or they can no longer find the strength to ask for help and they become the caretakers of these parents who in turn become the abusers of their own caretakers, not because they want to be their abusers, but because this is what disease does sometimes. There is so much pain in the world. One year or so after we've been closed in by this pandemic, and it looks unfortunately as if it's going to last for even longer than this year. Open your eyes, my dear ones. And open not the eyes of your minds, because the mind can frequently judge and condemn and in judging and condemning, the mind can frequently miss the point. Open the eyes of your heart and look at those around you with compassion and with love. Try to have patience when you reach the end of your patience. Try to be merciful and always speak with kindness. Always let go. Always try to turn the other cheek simply because the person who is hurting you, the person who is making you suffer very frequently has no idea what they are doing. And they are doing it not because they have something against you personally, because they hate you or because they want to harm, harm you, but simply because they do not know how else to react to the fear that is trapped in them. It's like we've been, we've been all set on dry, safe land at the beginning of all of this, and then layer after layer, rain after rain came, and this safe, solid ground has unnoticeably turned into 
into mud and now we are in the middle of a swamp and where we could have run before we can barely move now we can barely move our legs pain takes many shapes and forms and our duty as human beings i'm not even going to mention our duty as christians but our duty as human beings basic simple human beings is to have compassion towards each other and to strive to notice the pain of those around us and pain more often than not is hidden inside you may not notice it on their bodies but if you pay attention and if you look at the world with the eyes of your heart you will notice the deep wounds inside and the great suffering that is affecting everyone around us saint siloan once when he was in his monastery during the world war was um accused by the other monastics in the monastery that he is not in the habit of reading the newspapers and uh, therefore he doesn't know what is going on into the world and saint siloan said that a loving heart a heart that is always in prayer for the world before god does not need to read the newspapers to know the pain of the world because a loving prayerful heart feels the spirit of the world because the spirit of the world the pain of the world affects a loving prayerful heart so why am i now in the middle of the night here recording this video instead of praying well i have prayed before recording this and i will go back into my room and i will pray some more but i am doing this because i know that this is the one thing that can help more than anything regardless of the faith regardless of the state mental physical social state of those who are in in pain i am here speaking to you because this common humanity of ours allows us as saint siloan said to feel the pain of each other and if we stick together and if we all do the little that is up to us then this pain can be minimized and we can help those who are suffering to get past one more hour one more day and closer to the light together we can get past this if we allow our pain and ultimately our fears to take over and to break this common humanity of ours into pieces and to separate us from each other then we are lost but if we stick together in any way possible even by recording this video but even better by praying and by reaching out make a phone call write an email try to meet somebody and try to always listen and to see with the ears and the eyes of your heart if we allow the pain of our brother and our sister to enter our heart and if we then carry the cross of their pain if we do what christ has taught us to do if we carry each other's cross then this can be much easier than if we bear our crosses alone may god bless you my brother and my sister wherever you are in this world please 
multiply this blessing by turning it and pouring it and manifesting it back into the world, back upon those who are around you. Be blessed, my dear ones. Be blessed. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Keep thy servants from all harm who believe and trust in thee. The elder cried, Thou hast restored unto me the joy of thy salvation, O Christ. Receive thy servant who has wearied himself in the shadow to be a new initiate and sacred herald of grace as he magnifies thee with praise. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Theotokos, thou hope of all Christians, keep and shelter and preserve them that set their hope on thee. Acting as a divine interpreter, the chaste, hallowed, and venerable Anna openly confessed the Master with all reverence in the temple, and proclaiming the Theotokos, she magnified her before all them that were present. Well, standing in the temple's courts, having come in, Yeah.